Welcome back and now for the news in detail. A telephone call was held between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the Emir of the State of Qatar, His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani. His Majesty the King and His Highness Sheikh Tamim discussed the fraternal relations between the two countries and ways to develop them. They also discussed the latest regional and global developments of mutual interest. His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, attended the closing ceremony of the Ironman 70.3 Middle East Championship in, held in Bahrain under His Royal Highness's patronage at Reef Island. Upon arrival, His Royal Highness was welcomed by the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Works and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, along with several senior officials. His Royal Highness emphasized that the Kingdom of Bahrain's accomplishments in hosting and organizing championships and international sporting events are a result of the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for the youth and sports sectors. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister noted the Kingdom's capabilities and expertise which have strengthened its competitive position in hosting major international events. His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad commended the efforts of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa which have furthered the Kingdom's youth and sports sector to achieve the desired goals and aspirations. His Royal Highness commended the organizational efforts in successfully hosting this championship, which represents Team Bahrain's quality of experience in hosting international sporting events and tournaments. His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad expressed pride in Team Bahrain's dedicated efforts to advance the kingdom's leading position in all sectors, particularly in attracting and organizing various international events. His Royal Highness emphasized the kingdom's commitment to advancing Team Bahrain's skills and successes by creating quality opportunities, advancing their experiences and supporting their contributions to the kingdom's development goals for the benefit of all. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister affirmed that Bahraini's achievements in various fields showcase their limit, limitless determination and aspirations, and the Kingdom looks forward to adding to Team Bahrain's successes. His Royal Highness presented trophies to the male and female winners in various categories, including Mohamed Al Qais, who won first place in the Bahraini men category, and Ru'ya As Saati, who won first place in the Bahraini female category. During the ceremony, awards were given to the various category winners, sponsors, and the organizing committee.
Under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, and in the presence of His Majesty the King's Representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa, Bahrain witnessed the seventh edition of the main race of Ironman 70.3 Middle East Championship. On this occasion, His Highness Sheikh Nasser emphasized that Bahrain's hosting of major international championships contributes to the realization of the visions and aspirations of His Majesty the King in making the Kingdom of Bahrain a prominent sports tourism destination, highlighting the consistent achievements in sports milestones accomplished by the kingdom over the years. His Highness expressed his pride and appreciation for the attention, support and continuous follow-up of the Crown Prince and Prime Minister which reflects the significant role of the sports sector in achieving the kingdom's economic vision 2030. He expressed his happiness with the Kingdom of Bahrain's remarkable achievements in attracting major sporting events which have garnered global attention which reaffirms the kingdom's growth and prosperity and reinforces its international standings impressive portfolio of accomplishments on a global scale. His his Highness emphasized the high level of responsibility upheld by the Kingdom of Bahrain and its continuous commitment to exerting all efforts that lead to new achievements, wishing success for all participants in the Middle East Ironman Championship and hailing the efforts of all the organizers. In the presence of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, Honorary President of the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Racing Federation, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and coinciding with the Kingdom's celebrations of the Glorious National Day and His Majesty the King's accession to the throne, the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Racing Federation organized the National Day Endurance Championship at the Bahrain International Endurance Village with prominent participation from stables and riders. Also present was the Vice President of the Supreme Council for the Environment, Vice President of the Supreme Authority of the Rashid Equestrian, Question and Horse Racing Club and member of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa. Marking the occasion, the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Racing Federation affirmed that the wide participation witnessed in the National Day Endurance Championship in all races confirms the revival experienced by the Bahraini endurance sport and the widespread demand from stables and riders to participate in the tournaments organized by the Royal Federation. The Federation congratulated the winners, praising their outstanding efforts throughout the stages and wishing everyone further success. Success. President of the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, crowned the winners of the National Day Championship, where the victorious team tr trio won first places Uthman Abdul Jalil Al Awadi, Mohammed Khalid Al Rawai, and Isa Hamid Al Anazi.
In the presence of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Vice President of the Supreme Council for the Environment, Vice President of the Supreme Authority of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club, and Member of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, the first series of races for the third edition of the Bahrain International Horse Racing Championship organized by the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club was held yesterday at the club's racetrack. Present were a number of their Highnesses, representatives of the race Races sponsors and horse racing fans, owners, trainers, and horses from all over the world participated in the 10 rounds tournament. The organization of the Bahrain Turf Series follows the outstanding success of the two previous editions, as well as that of the Bahrain International Trophy, which placed Bahrain on the international horse racing map. The winners were crowned with race trophies as His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, leader of the victorious team, received the Muharraq International Cup from Chairman of Texel Air John Chillum. The first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, chairman of the General Sports Authority and president of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa, attended the Brave International Combat Week BICW. Held under His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid's patronage at the Khalifa Sports City Arena, the event is organized by Brave Combat Federation in partnership with the International Mixed Martial Arts Federation. His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid watched the competitions of Brave CF 79, the second main event of the BICW. Sixteen competitors participated in Brave CF 79 including Bahraini fighters Rasul Magomedov and Ramazan Glitinov, commenting His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid expressed pride in holding BICW in the kingdom, featuring three major brave CF professional events. His Highness Sheikh Khalid affirmed the kingdom's hosting of BICW has consolidated its status as a major destination for mixed martial arts in the region, following its previous successes in this regard. His Highness added that Bahrain welcomes all participating delegations and is proud of hosting the new BICW edition. The Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, made the following statement marking the International Anti-Corruption Day. The minister said that the Kingdom of Bahrain joins the rest of the world in celebrating International Anti-Corruption Day marked annually on December the 9th out of the dedication and strong will to fight such crimes through active programs and initiatives to promote sustainable development. He said that through the vision of His Majesty the King, the Kingdom of Bahrain has succeeded in achieving various milestones to be a roadmap to fight corruption through constitutional amendments supporting the legislative authority Authority to draft related laws and create and develop supervision bodies. This reflects the political will to promote integrity, transparency and fight corruption for citizens' comprehensive development and decent living. He said that the accountability and responsibility in the government work and integrity values is reinforced by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and his directives to intensify internal monitoring showcase his dedication to protecting public money. The Minister hailed the efforts of all national organizations in promoting integrity values and transparency principles principles, asserting that national anti-corruption campaigns reflect cooperation and integration among all segments of society to create ambitious awareness initiatives by sectors, organizations, NGOs and individuals. He said that the General Directorate of Anti-Corruption and Economic and Electronic Security has been dedicated to including various events and activities in the national anti-corruption campaign to promote integrity, culture and enhance awareness of the corruption risks and to be an opportunity to promote national cooperation through workshops, lectures and seminars. 
The Kingdom of Bahrain also has made regional and international anti-corruption efforts, making it an active global partner. Bahrain is part of the Arab and, and United Nations anti-corruption agreements. It is involved in international and regional efforts to fight corruption through constructive cooperation with regional and international organizations to exchange expertise and knowledge and build organizational capabilities. On this occasion, the Minister of Interior thanked and appreciated all national efforts and achievements to protect public money and support development. And to speak more about Anti-Corruption Day, we are joined by Major Maryam Yusuf Buzaid, who is the head of division in the General Directorate of Anti-Corruption and Economic and Electronic Security. Major Maryam, thank you for joining us. Can you tell us about the significance of marking International Anti-Corruption Day and sum up Bahrain's efforts in this regard? Uh, good evening. Uh, International Anti-Corruption Day is observed globally on the 9th of December, and the Kingdom of Bahrain joins the rest of the world in celebrating this day to raise awareness of corruption and the role of the Convention in combating and preventing it, which this year's theme is uniting the world against corruption. Uh, as corruption threatens uh, the social and economic development of societies around the world, which is why this day aims uh, to educate people on this issue. Um, marketing the International Anti-Corruption Day asserts that Bahrain continuous efforts to reinforce integrity, transparency, uh, and uh, anti-corruption. Protecting national uh, responsibility uh, leads us to uh, further progress, and national anti-corruption campaigns uh, reflect uh, cooperation and integration between all segments of society. Um, uh, the Kingdom of Bahrain uh, has been um, keen uh, to strengthen uh, international cooperation by joining uh, many organizations uh, and agreements, uh, most notably uh, the signing of the United Nations Convention Against Corruption. Um, so Bahrain becomes uh, one of the status parties uh, to the agreement uh, through uh, the General Directorate of Anti-Corruption uh, and Economic uh, and Electronic uh, Security, which has been uh, introduced in 2011. Uh, and uh, the national uh, and at the national uh, level, there is uh, many cooperation with the concerned uh, authorities, uh, such as uh, such as the public prosecution, uh, the national audit office, and uh, the central bank of Bahrain. Um, uh, furthermore, uh, the general directorate of uh, anti-corruption and economic and uh, electronic security uh, raises awareness campaigns uh, to promote uh, anti-corruption and integrity culture through holding various activities uh, such as uh, workshops, uh, seminars, uh, and lectures uh, for employees in all sectors and students. Um, and in this case, uh, workshops and courses were held uh, for all uh, corruption compassing sectors uh, in coordination uh, with the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime and International Anti-Corruption Academy. Um, at the end, uh, I would like uh, to add that the Anti-Corruption Directorate is dealing with uh, all corruption cases, whether reported by individuals uh, or organizations, uh, with complete uh, confidential. Uh, and the Integrity Hotline is uh, 992, is ready to uh, receive uh, such reports. Major Maryam Yusuf Zaid, the Head of Division at the General Directorate of Anti-Corruption and Economic and Electronic Security, thank you very much indeed. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Rashid Zayani, met in Dubai today with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Federal Republic of Germany, Annalera Barbok, on the sidelines of the Sarabani Yas Forum organized by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the United Arab Emirates. During the meeting, views were exchanged regarding the latest developments in the situation in the Gaza Strip and ways to support regional and international efforts aimed at a calm a ceasefire 
addressing the humanitarian conditions in the Gaza Strip and reviving efforts to bring peace to the Middle East region. As part of the activities of the International Anti-Corruption Day, Director General of the General Department of Anti-Corruption and Economic and Electronic Security at the Ministry of Interior, Brigadier Bassam Mohammed Al Maraj, inaugurated the Awareness Exhibition at the Avenues Mall in Manama. The exhibition aims to spread awareness and education, informing people about the dangers of corruption and its impact on society by focusing on bringing about behavioral and cognitive changes in the individual and their impact on society, and urging them to quickly report in the event of exposure to any corruption practice in order to achieve the strategic goals that the administration seeks to enhance the principles of community partnership. A number of departments of the Ministry of Interior participated in the exhibition, including the Anti-Corruption Department, the Anti-Cyber Crimes Department, the Anti-Economic Crimes Department, the International Affairs Department, Interpol, and the Child Protection in Cyberspace Unit. Brochures and souvenirs were also distributed to exhibition attendees. We are here to participate for the International uh, Anti-Corruption Day. Uh, through the exhibition, uh, we have different kind of uh, departments that through them we are explaining to the visitors how can they protect themselves of being victims in different kind of crimes, either financial crimes or the cyber crimes. Uh, through the anti-corruption uh, department, we show them how they can uh, call for any bribery or any kind of crimes that, uh, that are related to uh, corruption. And through the financial investigation department, we show the visitors how they protect their uh, uh, accounts in banks and or, or their uh, e-wallets, how they protect it or being scammed. And through the cyber crime department, we do show the citizens or the visitors uh, how they protect their social media. And also through the child unit, uh, that uh, they, we show that how can the child can uh, call a police. Uh, to protect themselves and they knew what kind of crimes that they can be involved in or they, anyone can send them any links or they can call them and to get some information or some documents from them which they are too young to know that. So that's why we keep this as something very important for them to, to know at this moment. The Kingdom of Bahrain has an infrastructure and human resources that allow it to develop in the field of digital transformation and the use of artificial intelligence. Bahrain has employed these modern technologies thanks to the directives of His Majesty in all fields until they have become a roadmap and a nucleus for work in several initiatives. The vision of Bahrain's leadership to employ modern technologies such as AI has improved government services and contributed to Bahrain's digital achievements. Temkin, in cooperation with Bahrain Polytechnic and Microsoft Corporation, launched the Artificial Intelligence Academy at Bahrain Polytechnic which provides a platform for youngsters to boost their innovation and creative capabilities. This academy is the first of its kind in the Middle East. It aims to train and qualify students from various schools and universities across Bahrain, as well as their teachers. The government of Bahrain approved the establishment of a national research in the field of artificial intelligence. The University of Bahrain and the Benefit Bahrain Company signed a memorandum of understanding to create a lab for AI and advanced computing. The lab will expand AI research and innovation in multiple areas such as cybersecurity, fraud, detection, big data analysis, sustainable energy, particle physics, engineering applications, climate change, and sea level prediction. The Royal Fund for Fallen Servicemen announced the registration for volunteering for the Commemoration Day campaign to sell the Razji flower pin is open. The aim of the campaign is to enhance community partnership, promote national values, and honor the heroes who have sacrificed their lives in the service of the nation. The Razji pin is a symbol for Commemoration Day in Bahrain and is worn on December the 9th to the 17th. The pin bears a Razji flower with a variety of Arabian jasmine sitting on a background of a green palm font. The Chief Executive Officer of the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, Dr. Nasser Qaidi, received the first cruise ship MSC Vertoza to arrive at Khalifa bin Salman port. This is part of the Authority's plans to attract international cruise ships in the new cruise ship season and within the framework of celebrations of the Bahrain holiday season. Dr. Qaidi emphasized the pivotal role of this involvement in sea trade cruise Europe in bolstering Bahrain's positions as a distinctive tourist destination. The initiative allowed Bahrain to showcase its diverse marine tourism attractions and the wide array of experiences it offers 
offers to travelers. He said that the Kingdom of Bahrain has witnessed during the past few years a remarkable growth in the number of tourists arriving on cruise ships from various parts of the world. Adding that during the month of December, the Kingdom will receive seven international cruise ships. Qaidi added that th through these trips, the authority seeks to provide marine accommodation experiences for visitors, which contributes to increasing the number of tourists arriving to the Kingdom and raising the revenues of the tourism sector and its contribution to the national economy. In the forthcoming 2023-2024 season, Bahrain's Khalifa bin Salman port is set to welcome five new cruise ships, marking a notable expansion in maritime tourism. Other major cruising companies visiting Khalifa bin Salman port in 2023-2024 included the ultra-luxury travel brands Oceania, Silverisa, Crystal, Phoenix and Ryzen. The COP28 presidency and the International Energy Agency high-level dialogues concluded with strong consensus on the key elements needed for the energy transition. The fifth and final dialogue held during COP28 in Dubai was attended by over 40 high-level leaders, including heads of state and government, heads of delegations and business leaders. It marks a significant achievement for the co-chairs, COP28 president Dr. Sultan al jabbar and executive director of the IEA, Dr. Fatah Brirol. The dialogues are concluded with clear convergence on the building blocks of a 1.5 degree Celsius aligned energy transition and strong support for an ambitious decision on the global stock tail at COP28. UAE Minister of Industry and Advanced Technology President of the COP28 Conference of the Parties, Dr. Sultan al jabbar confirmed that the COP28 is exceptional and has indeed contributed to writing the history of the world and the COP28 conferences. He stressed during a press conference held on Friday in the Blue Zone within the COP28 conference that within the combined efforts of everyone, unprecedented momentum was created to support global climate action. Dr. Jabbar stressed on the success in reaching consensus on the first day regarding the International Climate Fund. He added that in the next few days, countries have the ability together to achieve a radical transformation that contributes to reshaping global economies, shaping the common future and placing the countries, communities and individuals most vulnerable to the repercussions of climate change at the heart of climate action and its top priorities. <laughs> 